And how did the comic books come about? What, you know, why, what provoked them? Why, why did people start writing comic books? Because people, you know, it's quite a chore to read a book. You've got to sit down there and read every single line. But if there's a picture, you can understand the words even better. The comic book, if I may state a heresy, is an advance in literature, never recognized before. A picture book, a book that explains the words with pictures so that you can follow the story more easily and understand it more easily. It's a brilliant invention, and nobody has given it credit. What was the topic of the comic book, and who were the readers at that time? The comic book sold for 10 cents. Mm -hmm. Every magazine sold for 10 cents back then. And it was, the, it was young boys who really tuned into the adventure tales, and they could watch them as they watch movies. So was it like high school kids, or was it college age kids? No, it was young kids, mostly at the beginning. Uh, so how young? anywhere from uh, 10 years old on up to about 15. Okay, and then another thing that y you're an expert on is the pulp art. Can you just explain a little bit about that? All the immigrants were coming to the United States of America. They had to learn the English language. Children in one-room schoolhouses had to er learn the English language. They needed a cheap, cheap book. It was called McGuffey's Reader, and they learned to read from that book. It was made from pulp paper, the cheapest paper possible to, to make. Uh, it's made with, uh, with an acid uh, flow, and eventually it disintegrates. Like if you take a copy of your newspaper and put it out on the backyard, in two weeks it shreds. This is the origin of the word pulp and pulp paper. D uh, the, it began around 1886 with, uh, the, uh, go with, uh, with uh, certain magazines, meant to entertain men. Bear in mind, in those days, there were hardly any movies. There was maybe a little bit of radio. You paid, played cards with your grandpa in the, in the kitchen at, after, after hours. There was very little entertainment for men. And here came along a 10-cent magazine filled with every kind of adventure a man would want. Science fiction, strange planets attacking the planet Earth, uh, avi World War I aviation with uh, with biplanes attacking each other, uh, cowboys going after girls, spicy, the first chance of doing sex magazines of, uh, or implied, where the cover has the girl with her, her dresses torn and the bad guy is after her and uh, the good guy is about to save her. So these were the action magazines of that time. My sister and I knew that when my father got his copy of Argosy, leave that old man alone for three hours, he had just joined the French Foreign Legion. So they produced the, the pulp magazine for two cents. It sold wholesale for a nickel and 10 cent at the newsstand. Oh, that's not much money. It was then a hot dog with mustard and sauerkraut, a nickel. The subway fare, a nickel. Um, a cup of coffee, a nickel. Um, uh, pennies really mattered. There were penny candies. You could buy cigarettes for pennies. Um, a gallon of gas, 15 cents, 10 cents. How well did they sell back then? Were they, and was so it more well so in New York than other parts? So well that Harry Steig of Popular Publications became a multimillionaire at the bottom of the Depression. Now, there's the movie Pulp Fiction. Yes. How does that relate to what's going on, uh, you know, what, what happened during that time with the magazines? Only by the name. And there's a poster behind you there called Pulp Fiction from the movie. I love the movie, but it had absolutely nothing to do with the history of the pulps. You have to understand that in the United States of America at that time, you could not use a four-letter word in print. In the movies, the code from 1934 was if Myrna Loy and William Powell are married, the beds must be three feet apart, they must be fully clothed in pajamas, and a kiss cannot last more than 30 seconds. That was the Hayes Code. So at, um, at one end, you have freedom fighting prudery. So how long were these uh, magazines out then? The magazines went from about uh, 1886 to 1953. In 1953, they dropped dead. Why? They What's, lost what their happened there? They privilege. 
They were no longer selling on the newsstands. The GIs had come back from World War II and they were far more sophisticated. The paperback books that you could stick in your pocket and read whenever you wanted to had, had come to supplant them in many ways. And a lot of the artists that did the cover paintings for the pulps in the 30s did the covers for the paperbacks in the 40s and 50s.